The FDA gives the go-ahead for a big expansion of booster shots, President Biden's shrinking economic agenda, and new details on Facebook's big rebranding. Thursday Need to Know, let's go. Good morning, this is Cheddar's Need to Know podcast for Thursday, October 21st. I'm Jill Wagner with Carlo Versano. Hey, Carlo, good morning. What's the haps, Jill? How are we? <laughs> we are okay. How are you? Good. Oh, I have a, uh, a new show recommendation for everybody. Need to know uh, TV club commence. Uh, it's called Dope Sick, and it's on Hulu. Have you heard of it? No. It's a, um, it's a series. I think it's a limited series. It's sort of like a dramatization of the opioid crisis. I know it sounds really uh, exciting. But no, it's, uh, it's about the Sackler family and Purdue Pharma. And Michael Keaton is in it. He's really good. Um, but it's just, uh, it, it's really, it, I really recommend it. And it's just, you know, that story is... It, it probably doesn't get the coverage that it deserves, right? The opioid ep- epidemic, and that's probably our fault in the in the media over the last you know decade, kind of underplaying it. But it is just—it's so astounding what that company and that family did to so many Americans. And this show, even though it's a dramatization, it's not a documentary, but it just does a very good job of sort of putting it into context. And I think that if you like this podcast, you'll probably like it. It's on okay. Hulu. Okay. Um, thank you. Good. Good recommendation. Yes. From uh, personally. I watched Something Borrowed last night on Netflix, which is like <laughs> not, I read the book and I love the book. I love Emily Giffen and all of her books, but uh, the, mm-hmm. the movie did not do it justice, but I still just wanted something light and yeah. fluffy. This as is I not that. This yeah, is, this not is that. the opposite of that. Um, <laughs> yes. But cool. Thank you, Carlo, because I, I, I sometimes think Hulu gets overlooked as well, you know, in terms of where you'd go to watch something. They got, they got good stuff on there. Um, all right, let's get to some news here. The FDA is recommending booster shots for Johnson & Johnson and Moderna vaccine recipients, also saying that people are free to get boosters that are different from the vaccine they initially received. Assuming the, C- the CDC signs off on that today, all J&J recipients uh, aged 18 and up will be eligible for a booster as long as their shot was at least two months ago. The booster policy for Moderna is the same as Pfizer. Anyone 65 and up or with a medical condition, living situation, or job that puts them at high risk of of contracting COVID can get uh, that booster. Yes, this will uh, this will open up boosters for tens of millions of more people. Uh, so that's good news. I went to the doctor yesterday for the first time, and I don't even know, God, years, uh, just like the regular doctor. Um, and I tried to get a booster, but he wouldn't play ball. Well, that's because is... you you don't go to the doctor for that. I've I've heard totally the opposite <laughs> that anybody who wants a booster no, I get know. a booster. Um, yeah, I, no, do no, you, do I your know. doctor even have the COVID vaccine? Yeah, I think so. Oh, but actually, okay. I don't know. I mean, I didn't, I didn't go for that reason. I just went to, like, make sure that I'm still, like, you know, the heart's still ticking and everything. Now that I got, now that I got a baby, I feel like I got to be sort of, like, somewhat responsible about my own health. Uh, but I did get my flu shot, uh, which everyone should go and do now before you forget. Seriously, make a note. Get your flu shot. The flu is going to be really bad this winter. Uh, and if you're wondering, by the way, I asked the doctor this. You can get both at the same time. So if you have, haven't gotten your vaccine or if you're eligible for a booster and you haven't gotten it, he said that it's fine to get that uh, the COVID booster and a flu shot together. So hopefully one day soon, maybe even within the next year, uh, that'll just be one shot. But for now, it's it's fine to get them both. And for the record, I'm not recommending that everybody go and get a booster if you're not eligible for it. It's just I've heard that yeah. I've heard from others that it's it's that they don't really check that much. And I understand yeah. that there's plenty of supply of people. You know, it's probably a matter yeah, right. of time before the recommendation is for everyone to get it. So if you're nervous, exactly. yeah. you know. Um, okay, meanwhile, here in New York City, Mayor De- Bill de Blasio announcing that all city workers will be required to be vaccinated with no testing option. New York City is the largest municipal workforce in the country, and it follows San Francisco as the second big city to mandate vaccines for city employees, including cops. There's an incentive here, too. Uh, if you get your first dose, if you work for New York City and you get your first dose before the November 1st deadline, you actually get 500 bucks in your paycheck. Uh, so that should be some something of an incentive, I would think. And uh, I think that, you know, I, I was happy to see de Blasio do this because, remember, we talked about this a while ago, right? But, like, the testing option, I, I think that, you know, for private companies, like, it's one thing, right? Because it's coming out of the, you know, the corporate uh, bank account. But when it's public employees, you know, we're on the hook for that. We're the people who are paying for testing and testing is expensive, especially if you're doing it every day or every week. Um, so, I, you know, I think that cities are going to start to say, like, the testing thing ain't going to work. You got to either get vaccinated or find a new, you know, line of work here. 
Well, I think what happened is the city realized that they, they couldn't enforce the testing. And, and that's what we yeah. saw with the MTA, is that there were tons of workers who weren't vaccinated. They were supposed to be getting tested. Then they said, then the MTA said, OK, well, we'll just pool the tests. So we're going to test about 10 percent of people. It just didn't work. They don't have the, the manpower yeah. to enforce it. They or don't the have infrastructure. The money. Right. It's, it's just it yeah. doesn't it doesn't work. So I guess de Blasio's thinking, you know, I, I actually have to run the city <laughs> and, and right. that policy just isn't practical. I would right. guess in terms of, of private companies that ultimately we all will wind up paying for it because uh, if you're working at a private company where there is a testing policy, I imagine they'll just make benefits less generous or something. Sure, I, yeah. I, I don't I don't see any company taking a hit onto their bottom line because yeah. of this. Just no, my, you're probably right. Just you're probably right. Two we always end up paying. We always end we, up paying. It always everything. comes back to us, no. and and yeah. nothing nothing's going to get better in terms of benefits and pay. I mean, I I just I I don't see how it wouldn't ultimately affect all of us. Um, yeah. Okay, an update on the state of Biden's Build Back Better agenda, which seems to be shrinking by the day. Senator Kristen Cinema of Arizona reportedly, Kirsten, I'm sorry, I don't know why I have this mental block. I, I, and, I do the same thing. I don't know why. And you're... I have friends who are named Kirsten versus Kristen. It's not as if this is like this crazy thing. So, yes, Senator Kirsten Cinema of Arizona reportedly telling lobbyists that she opposes any increase to the tax rate on wealthy people or corporations, which is the main way that President Biden's social spending plan would have been paid for. Cinema's vote is needed for Democrats to pass that bill in the Senate. The legislation, which started with a price tag of $3.5 trillion, now down to about $1.8 trillion as Democrats continue to negotiate its size and scope amongst themselves. Cinema's supposed red line on tax increases comes after Biden told progressives that tuition-free community college, which was a, another signature part of this uh, plan, out of the final bill. Cinema, I, I, what is what is her deal? I, I don't I don't understand her. I I, I don't know if she, is she just trying to sabotage Joe Biden. I, Man, Joe Manchin, I understand. I, I've said it before. I get him where he comes from. Right, he's a basically a Republican in a very red state, um, who also has all of these you know coal interests. Um, but cinema, I just I don't really see what she's all about. I mean, higher tax taxes on corporations and rich, not only are are they just extremely politically popular. It's also, as you mentioned, how you pay for this. So I don't if this is legit and you never know with this stuff. Right. It's always posturing and people put these trial balloons out in the media to see what people say. So you don't know until the die is finally cast. But I don't I, I don't see how that doesn't actually just tank the whole thing if she's serious about that. But I think the bottom the bottom line here is no matter how the White House is going to spin it, th this is not going well for Democrats, right? The, these negotiations are quickly becoming uh, Obamacare redux, if you ask me. You know, I think what, what's going to happen here is Dems are going to end up passing some sort of like watered down grab bag of proposals that don't actually do enough to make real improvements immediately in people's lives. And then they're going to get wiped out in the midterms uh, next November, which is exactly what happened, remember, with Obamacare back in, in 2010. So, I, I mean, my my argument would be like, if you can't get what you want because of Manchinema or Cinemansion or whatever that portmanteau is, I think that it's better to just go big on one or two things, right? Like make the child tax credit permanent, give Medicare power to negotiate drug prices, something else that pulls at like 90 percent, which – pretty much everybody in America agrees we should do. If you just go to any other country and try and get a prescription, it becomes completely apparent that we do it completely wrong here. Um, <laughs> no, it's, it's crazy. true. It's true. Right. It's like it's it, that's something that I, I don't see how anybody in any party could disagree with that. Um, there's also a new report in Bloomberg that the clean energy program, which was the cornerstone of the entire climate policy of this bill that Manchin has been against. Now it's going to be state grants. So basically what that means is it's going to be like a contest between states for who can decarbonize fastest. Oh, no, that's going to work, right? But again, just like Obamacare, right? Instead of doing the public option, they ended up doing the state exchanges, which were just confusing and they didn't work and nobody understood them. And then Democrats lost big in the midterms. So there was a report yesterday that Manchin was going to switch parties. I don't know if you saw that. So I just want to I get did. on the record yeah. that he has come out to, to basically call that report BS. Um, and so, I, I, you know, just it doesn't look like that's actually happening. But I agree. This is why, though, in, in terms of when, when we talk about um, this massive bill, why I had said perhaps they should do it a la carte. You know, I, I read that op-ed a while ago and I thought it made a lot of sense because a lot of this stuff is quite popular with the American people, but it's being lumped right. in. So one of the proposals here is, OK, they're going to call community college 
is out, but uh, pre universal pre-K is in. So, okay, mm -hmm. so that's, right. that's one of the compromises. Um, now the thinking is for, for making family leave, they're going to give um, four weeks instead of 12. As you know, having just had a baby, four weeks, like, don't bother at that point. I mean, yeah. I guess it's no, better I'm, I'm than nothing, I, but, like, I mean, I, I don't think I'd left the it's house at that point. Um, I, I think it's offensive, actually. I think yeah. it's offensive. <laughs> but I'm saying, so it's make that, make family, make a make a family leave, make that a bill. Make that a standalone bill yeah. and, 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 and dare somebody to vote against it. Because, you know, at face value, I think most Americans would say, Wait a minute. Are we are the only con we're really one of the only countries who doesn't have mandatory family yeah. leave for for new parents. So I, I I think that's where maybe they're playing this wrong, right? Where they are trying to lump everything together. That the tax credit, uh, they want to extend it one year. I mean, what does that do? And and a lot of it's for political reasons, right? Okay, well, so they can then go back during the midterms and and campaign and say, oh, right. we passed the family tax credit, whatever it is. Um, so I don't know. Let these. Let these policies sink or swim, I would say, on their own. And if there's not enough support yep. for them, then, you know, let some Republicans maybe just vote on, on that climate change. Maybe if it was just the coal policy, some Republicans would get on board and you wouldn't need yeah. Senator Manchin. So I don't know, perhaps a different strategy. Well, no yeah, I mean, the, the filibuster is what makes that complicated, and we don't have to get get into that because it's kind of boring. But back, just one thing on the the mansion story, I saw that that he that he was going to switch parties, and I immediately called BS on that. Why would you? He's literally the most influential person in America. He's arguably the most influential person on earth at the moment, right? <laughs> Why would you give that up? Um, <laughs> switching gears here, the gunman who carried out that massacre at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School on Valentine's Day of 2018 pleaded guilty to all charges related to that rampage, including the murder of 17 people. He apologized to the victims for carrying out the deadliest high school shooting in U.S. history, and now he faces a possible death sentence. You know, I actually couldn't, um, when I saw in the, uh, on the AP planner yesterday that this was going to happen, that they were going, that the, 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 he was going to plea, I actually couldn't remember this guy's name or what he looked like. And I actually thought to myself, maybe that's progress, right? Because usually, like these these shooters, almost uh, they become they, they become these like notorious figures, and like I still can't get the picture of that psychopath who killed all those babies at Newtown. May he rot in hell. I can't get his face out of my head still from that story. But anyway, so anyway, I don't know. I don't know if anyone else feels that way, but I think it's a good thing that these guys are not maybe getting the sort of notoriety that school shooters used to. Uh, the families also announced at the same time that they made a settlement. They, they've reached a settlement with the school district there, and there are still lawsuits pending against the Broward County Sheriff, which you remember had that absolutely embarrassing response to the shooting when officers arrived on scene as this was happening and just kind of stood outside and waited no words no yeah. words um so i messaged you yesterday actually to say as you were putting this together do not use his name um and the reason yep. for that is because the family members of the victims have been very vocal about saying do not give this guy any attention this should mm -hmm. be solely about the victims here let's not glorify him and you know it's not just for them but it, it's for uh, it's a message to any would-be mass shooter out there. Exactly. History is yeah. not going to remember you. No one's going to know your name. Exactly. No one's yeah. going to know what you look like. Don't bother. Um, and, and so he did plead guilty, which was expected. Not expected, though, is that he gave this short statement to the families. Uh, he basically apologized. So what's happening right now is that the jury, he pleaded guilty, but the jury has to just decide whether or not they're going to sentence him to life in prison or they're going to sentence him right. to death. Uh, he said, quote, I'm very sorry for what I did. I have to live with it every day. Um, and if I were to get a second chance, I would do everything in my power to try to help others. He then like rambled a bit. He talked about marijuana. and uh, I saw that. Was what was just, that all about? What are you talking leave, about? Leave um, weed out of it, man. So I listened to a bunch of interviews with victims' families. They are unmoved, to say the least, uh, not interested in what this guy has to say. And they, they pretty much are thinking he's just trying to get the jury to give him a life sentence instead of the death sentence. So, right. um, you know, that's where they are. Again, it's not up to them. And the judge, you know, in, in the judge wanted to make that really clear that the, the victim's families, families, the shooter basically was trying to say, 
whatever the victim's families think I deserve, I deserve. But that's not how this works. It's the jury yeah, that right. decides. And so the judge wanted to make that really clear um, just to prevent any sort of mistrial, right? You know, is that going to yeah. be grounds for a mistrial? So uh, that's where things stand right now. Okay, switching gears on Wall Street, the Dow and the S&P knocking on the door of new all-time highs. Both indexes are within striking distance of record closes, despite the labor um, and inflationary pressures that have been hitting the economy. Corporate earnings have been coming in hot, helping fuel the rally. Tesla was the latest to beat estimates on profit and revenue. Yeah, the Tesla numbers yesterday were uh, huge. Tesla, of course, very vertically integrated, so they've been they've been able to navigate the various supply chain issues that we've been talking about much better than most, right? Because they basically they, they make all of their stuff essentially themselves. Um, meanwhile, uh, just on on the topic of all time highs, Bitcoin hit a fresh one yesterday above sixty six thousand dollars after the successful launch of that uh, that ETF dedicated to trading Bitcoin futures that went live this week. But um, earnings have just been good, all things considered. Uh, sort of. Shockingly good, I would say, actually, you know, companies, it appears, at least for now, are, are managing these various supply and uh, and labor issues. In some ways, they're passing the costs on to us. And that's what, what's helping their earnings. But there, there hasn't been this like huge, uh, you know, earnings disappointment that's that's hitting the market. Well, that's sort of what's going on is that these companies are passing the costs on. And right. A lot of these public companies uh, have a little bit more power in terms of the supply chain. It's the little guys that could wind up actually getting hurt the most because they don't have as right. much leverage and they're not, they don't need as many shipping containers. They just don't have yeah. the ability to, to, to really control the, the, the shipping exactly. process yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff and, and the supply chain issues. Um, okay, there are some fresh reports coming in about Facebook's possible impending name change. The social media giant's been in serious discussions about a corporate reband for the last two months, although Mark Zuckerberg has reportedly still not settled on what that new name should be. The company could announce a new name for its umbrella corporation as soon as next week, possibly to reflect its focus on the metaverse, though Zuckerberg now said to be leaning away from that branding. Facebook earnings are Monday, and that could conceivably be when this is announced. And to be clear, this wouldn't be like you go to Facebook and it's called something else right. um, or Instagram and it's called something else. It's just the corporate, the corporate. Yeah. Name. It's like when Google rebranded uh, its corporate name to Alphabet a few years ago. Right. Uh, it, but it's actually what it's really more like is when Philip Morris changed its name to Altria back in 2003 because they didn't want to that that name. Philip Morris just had such bad connotations. I mean, really, what this you don't you, you don't do this kind of thing if your company isn't in serious trouble. Uh, but I think that it also shows that Mark Zuckerberg doesn't see that the main Facebook app, the, the thing that we actually think of as Facebook, right, the little blue F icon that, on your phone, he doesn't see that as the future of the company anymore. And I don't really think anybody does. Um, but I think the smart money, and just in terms of the rebrand, says that it's going to be something like Horizon Inc. or like the Horizon Corporation, because that's that's that plays off the name for this metaverse project that they've been working on. But, you know, we shall see. I don't, I don't know any other good ones. Book face? <laughs> Um, all right, now for more to know before you go. This is important. You could throw away any onions that you currently have unless you're certain of where they came from. The CDC put out an alert on a salmonella outbreak that sickened more than 600 people across the country. It's linked to whole red, white, and yellow onions that were imported from Mexico. And it's, since it's unlikely that you'd know when, where, or how your onions were imported, Unless, I guess, you got them at the farmer's market. The CDC says it's best just to toss any that you have and clean whatever surfaces they came into contact with. And you got to hope restaurants are doing the same and, you know, yeah. and, and fast food chains that use onions. Well, especially because onions can last a while, right? I got yeah. onions in my fridge that are probably a couple months old at this point. Ugh, that's kind of gross. Okay, uh, former President Trump announcing that he has lined up funding for a new social media platform that will be called Truth Social, and it's going to roll out in the first quarter of next year. It is part of what Trump says is going to be a bigger publicly traded media company that he's calling Trump Media and Technology Group, which would go public uh, via a SPAC. PayPal is in late stage talks to acquire Pinterest. The deal, if completed, would value the social platform for pinning photos at about $40 billion, PayPal's new strategy um, is becoming something of a super app for finances and e-commerce, similar to China's WeChat. A Pinterest acquisition would expose it to new users who use Pinterest as part of their shopping experience. I am a huge Pinterest fan. 
Are you? Ter- I was not, ask. not like in terms, not business model wise, just in terms of as a yeah. consumer. I I helped my my wedding. I got so many ideas from Pinterest when I bought my house. I have so many design ideas. I go on it all the time, but I never buy anything from it. So you know, this right. is the idea is to actually yeah, make yeah, it yeah. the way you can now buy stuff straight through Instagram to I guess make it easier That's to smart. buy stuff straight through Pinterest. Yeah, it's smart. Pinterest is one I've never really used. Uh, okay, well, this one close to my heart. The much-anticipated Dune adaptation hits theaters and HBO Max tomorrow. The space epic getting very good buzz from those who have seen it. Critics calling it visually spectacular. Rotten Tomatoes has this movie at an 88%. Also, a little tip, apparently it's actually going to come out on HBO Max tonight. So if you're really dying to see this movie... You can check it out after 6 p.m. Eastern. It'll drop on that service. Brian Laundrie's family attorney telling CNN's Chris Cuomo last night that, quote, the probability is strong that the human remains found in a Florida nature reserve are those of Laundrie. A notebook and backpack belonging to Laundrie, who's a person of interest in the killing of Gabby Petito, were also found. The human remains were found in an area that was underwater until recently and are said to be in bad shape, meaning that the identification process could take a while. And uh, on MLB Watch, the Dodgers and the Red Sox are both on the brink of elimination in the postseason. Eddie Rosario of the Braves cranked two home runs to put uh, Atlanta within one game of the World Series, while the Astros just dominated the Red Sox to go up 3-2 to two in the ALCS. So that's what we got, Jill. But by the way, before we go, tomorrow is Friday somehow, and uh, we're going to be back on we're going to be back on YouTube, assuming that uh, all things go well. So look for us on the YouTube live chat. We'll remind you of that tomorrow morning as well. It's our Friday watch party. Always a good time. Get ready. All right, that's what you need to know for Thursday, October twenty first. Have a good one, guys.